Good morning. Welcome back to JPCE Spiritual Talk. It's Jared Campbell. Before we get into our readings this morning, we're going to ask the Lord in a prayer in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're going to ask the Lord to shine to our hearts, O loving Master, the pure light of your divine knowledge, and open the eyes of your mind that we may understand your teachings in Scripture. Help us to apply what we learn. So after having conquered sinful desires, we may pursue a spiritual way of life, thinking doing all things that are pleasing to you. But you are Christ, your God, you are light. And to you we give glory, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, endless ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory of the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever, endless ages. Amen. Good morning. Welcome back. The great is faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Our first reading this morning will come out of Hebrews chapter 11, starting at verse 32. And we'll read to Hebrews chapter 12 and end in verse 3. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Faith of other Israelites. And what more shall I say from the time would fail me to, to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephunneh, and also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promise, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weaknesses were made strong, became violent in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they may obtain a better resurrection. To others had a trial of mocking, scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two. They were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins, goatskins, and being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in the, in the deserts and mountains and in, in dens and in caves of the earth. Face perfection. And all these having obtained a good testimony through faith, they did, not, they did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Look to Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the glory that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls, in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, in, so back in Hebrews chapter 11, in verse 37, it was talking about being sawn in two. Now, some traditions say that Isaiah was killed in this manner by Messiah, right? That's what some traditions say. And verse 38 mentioned caves. That is found in the Old Testament, especially in 2 Maccabees chapter 6, verse 11, and 2 Maccabees chapter 10, verse 6. And verse 40, it said, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. So Christ's incarnation and all that he accomplished for us in the flesh redeems the Old Testament saints who by faith participate in his resurrection and also in his kingdom. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it said, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily snares us, and let us run the endurance, the race that is set before us. The cloud of witnesses, that this includes not only what Old Testament saints, which is mentioned right there in chapter 11, but also the saints and martyrs of the Lord in all ages. If they made it, so can we, right? We preserve by getting rid of sin, right? The weight which keeps us from, from what he the truth. Setting our destination in the heavenly city, running the race, right? Running the race of faith and keeping what our attention focus on Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. The race is not a sprint. No, it's not. But a marathon of endurance. It does not end until we fully enter the age to come. In the Father, 
Son, and the Holy Spirit. In verses 2 and 3, in Hebrews chapter 12, it said, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Christ is both the author, that is, what the initiator, and the finisher, that is, and he is the perfect, you know, the perfecter of faith. His joy was to do what God's will, right? He endured the cross, and that he voluntarily, he voluntarily, right, on his own free will, accepted humiliation and death. We are to imitate what his same determination and his same perseverance. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. Our next reading, Matthew chapter 28. So Matthew 28, 16 through 20, the Great Commission in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then, then, then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So in verse 18, in Matthew 28, it said, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So all authority has been given to me. Christ declares that the authority that was his by nature and his divinity is now also possessed by his glorified human nature. This human nature has now trampled the final enemy. That's dead. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 through 28. In verse 19, it said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This great commission, our Lord's final commandment given on earth, is to be lived out in the church until what he returns again. Making, dis making disciples cannot be done in the strength of man, no, but only in the power of God. It's true. The power of the resurrection is not only for Jesus himself, but is given to all believers for Christian life and mission. In verse 20, it says, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always until the end of the age. Amen. Christ himself is present in each believer and in the church always, both personally and in the Holy Spirit. For neither can be separated from the other. To the end of the age does not by any means imply that, he, that we will be separated from him at the end of the world. He is with us now forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Beautiful. Our next reading, Matthew chapter 10. Verses 32 through 42. So Matthew 10, starting in verse 32, we'll end at verse 32. In the, name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, and I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Where I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my, for my sake will find it. He who, receive, he who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of the prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of the disciple, surely I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
So let's look at verse 34 here in Matthew 10. It said, Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Listen attentively. Just before his most violent death on the cross, Christ promised peace to his disciples. But the existence of evil, right? It brings on spiritual warfare, right? Because the presence of evil. The earth to which Christ came was under the authority of Satan. You can see John chapter 12, verse 31, and 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. It is therefore essential that Christ wage war against the leader of the vice with weapons of virtue. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 through 18. You can also look at Luke chapter 12, verse, verse 51. Verses 35 and 39, it says, For I come to set a man against his a father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves his son and daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my, for my sake will find it. To carry his cross, a true disciple must be ready, ready if necessary, <clears throat> to sacrifice even family relationships. Let's look at Luke chapter 12. Let's look at verse 53 in Luke 12. It says, Father will be divided against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. <sighs> this is fulfilled in the prophecy in Micah, chapter 7, verse 6, the Old Testament. In addition to its literal meaning, which has been experienced in the church since the time of Christ, the older generation being divided from the younger generation also symbolizes, one, the rejection of the new covenant by the followers of the old covenant, and two, the spiritual struggle between our old and sinful state and our renewal state in Christ. You can also see Ephesians chapter 4, verses 20. Through 24. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So in verses 40 and 42, it says, he, re he, who re he who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. He receives a prophet in the name of the prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of the righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And and whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup, only a cup of water in the name of his Disciple, surely I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. Apostles are ambassadors, right? Who represent the Lord. Therefore, all who extend help to them are showing mercy directly to Christ and will receive God's reward from the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our last reading this morning, Matthew chapter 19. And this will close us out. Thank you all again for following. So Matthew chapter 19. Verses 27 through 30. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So Matthew 19, 27 to 30. Then Peter answered and said to him, See, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? So Jesus said to him, As surely I say to you, that in, that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mothers or wives or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So as we see, especially in verse 29, it says, And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters, father or mother or wife or children or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. So here, Christ is not commending believers to divorce spouses and abandon children. According to St. John Chrysostom, this refers to keeping faith under persecution, even if it means to lose one's family. It also means to accept that unbelieving family members may cut off ties because of the believer's faith. You can also reference 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 12 through 16. Believers are promised a hundredfold of houses and relatives. 
So believers are promised a hundredfold, a hundredfold of houses and relatives, not in earthly sense, but in a spiritual sense. The fathers and mothers of the church are brothers and sisters in Christ and houses of worship and fellowship. You know, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In verse 28, it said, So Jesus said to them, Surely I say to you that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on the twelfth, the twelfth row, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Let's take a look at Luke 22, verse 30. So Luke 22. Okay, verse 30, Luke 22. And it says, That you may eat and drink at my table in the kingdom and sit on the throne, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Christ judges by discerning the heart and not by examining deeds. So also the apostles are being shaped to exercise spiritual judgment concerning faith and in rebuking error with virtue, St. Ambrose of Milan. The apostles will judge not with earthly judgment, but by the witness of their own lives. Since God's kingdom begins with the resurrection of Christ, the authority of judgment has already been given to the apostles and their successors in the journey of the church on earth. You can also see Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, and John chapter 20, verse 23, in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you all for following. I'm going to close out in prayer. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh Lord God. O oh Lord God, you've spoken to us your divine saving words. You illuminate the souls of sinners and comprehend what we just read. That we don't appear simply hear spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of faith. Having a blameless life and conduct without reproach in Christ our Lord. And to you we give glory. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever in the sages. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. But yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever, in this ages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. All right, we depart in peace. In the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Go in peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. Keep seeking him. All right? Lay those treasures in heaven. Thank you all again for following. It means a lot. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. In the sages. Amen. J. Wesley Campbell, good morning, good day, good evening, good afternoon, good night. Whenever and however, these messages, these readings, these studies, reflections find you all. Right? Go in peace. I love you all. I pray for you all every, every day. All right? I hope you're learning a lot, learning more from the Bible. Without further ado, thank you all so much. This is JPCE Spiritual Talk. Right? Never hold back. No excuses. Right? Set your treasures in heaven. Build that relationship. That's what I'm here to teach you all. It's how to draw closer to your Creator, to our Lord. Right? That's what He has sent me to do. Is to teach you all how to develop a closer relationship with Him. So you can feel power of the Holy Spirit, remember you don't want to have a form of godliness and, and deny its power, right? No. There are people out there that, that, that have that. Now, they they have a form of godliness but they are denying its power, right? You don't need, let's not be that way, right? I love you so, I love you all so much. Have a great day. Jared Wesley Campbell. I'm out. <laughs>